Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we continued our free Forex trade course with a look at the second category of things that move the Forex market, capital flows. In today's lesson we're going to switch back over to the trade flows category with a look at something which is known as the current account. So let's get started. While the concept that we are going to be covering here is fairly involved, I'm not covering this because I feel we need to know all the details, but because having a general understanding of how the flows of money in and out of a country are measured is important to help understand how the value of the currency is affected by those flows. Now that we have an understanding of both trade and capital flows, we are going to learn how each is measured starting with the current account. The basic formula for calculating the current, current account for a country is exports minus imports of goods and services, which is also referred to as the balance of trade, plus net factor income from abroad, which is basically interest and dividends, plus net transfer payments. These are things like aid given to foreign countries. In general, for the countries whose currencies we are focused on, the balance of trade portion of the formula is the main component we are concerned with, and very little, if anything, will ever be heard about the other two components. When thinking about a country's imports and exports, the balance of trade portion, you will also hear a country described as having either a current account surplus or a current account deficit. A current account surplus basically means that a country is exporting more than they are importing, which, as we learned in our lesson on trade flows, should strengthen the value of a currency, all else being equal. A current account deficit basically means that a country is importing more than it is exporting, which should weaken the value of its currency, all else being equal. If you remember from our lesson on trade flows, I gave the example there of a U.S. company needing to import $1 million worth of steel from a Canadian steel producer. Just to give a simple example, let's say for a second that this was the only transaction that both the United States and Canada did with foreign countries. If this were the case, then the United States would have a current account deficit of $1 million and Canada would have a current account surplus of $1 million. Now obviously there are millions of transactions just like this one which go on between countries all over the world. The current account measures these transactions so we as traders can have an idea of whether the value of a uh, country's currency should be increasing or decreasing based on the trade flows of that country, all else being equal. As of this lesson, China has the largest current account surplus at 363 billion US dollars and the United States has the largest current account deficit at 747 billion US dollars. It is because of this that many argue China's currency is too weak and the US dollar is too strong, two imbalances which have started to right themselves over the past year. Here's a graph of the current accounts of some of the other major countries whose currencies we are focused on, so you can have an idea of whether those countries are more import or export oriented. As we will learn, this is, something that which, this is something which is going to be important when analyzing economic data relating to those currencies. That's our lesson for today. In our next lesson, we'll look at how the capital flows side of the equation is measured, so we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and good luck with your trading.